and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today I'm going to be sewing Clarkia, also known as Gadisha or Farewell to Spring. I am not sure what the difference is between these names. I have done so much research trying to figure it out and all I can tell you is that I'm going to call certain types of Clarkia Clarkia and then other types I'm going to call Gadisha just because that way I can differentiate them in my mind. But actually the packets just seem to be labelled varyingly and I've looked online and everything online is incredibly confusing and it just doesn't really say. Some people say that Gadisha was the old name and Clarkia is the new name and some people are still calling Gadisha Gadisha and we could call them all farewell to spring. But enough about the names of these plants. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through the different varieties that I'm going to be sowing. I'm sowing seven different varieties today and I'm going to talk a little bit about what to expect from the plants and what they enjoy best, what kind of environment they enjoy best. And then I'll move on to showing you how I'm sowing them and how I'm going to get them to germinate. So as I said, what I've done is I've kind of divided my seeds into two different varieties. So um, I've got four Clarkia elegans that I'm going to be sowing. These are also known as Clarkia, and I'm gonna read it off the seed packet because I can't remember how to pronounce it. Clarkia unguiculata, I'll put it up on the screen. So these are also Clarkia elegans or farewell to spring. The ones that I'm calling Gadisha are Clarkia amoena. And the reason I've split them is because the flowers look different on these two different types. Like they are very different in my opinion. And when I've grown them in the past, like when I was a beginner, I got really confused as to why some Clarkia look different to other Clarkia. And then I realized that there were actually different, is it species? Different types. Um, anyway. <laughs> So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Clarkia elegans and how best to grow them. And actually all the Clarkia godetia like the same environments. So um, it's, it's exactly the same for both of them. Um, it's just that I've separated my seeds so I can describe the flowers better. So the Clarkia elegans flowers grow on these long, I would describe them as wiry stems and the flowers sort of alternate on either side of the stems um, and they open up up all the way up the stem so you have color on most of the stem and the flowers themselves narrow towards the center so they've got four petals but the the shape of the petal really narrows towards the center and I think they are particularly beautiful some are fluffier than others so some sort of are almost double petaled and some are very single petaled and I think those are more akin to the native variety that's found in California, growing wild. I think they grow really well in um, on the edges of woodlands or open woodland. Um, that's where they're very well suited. So they do like sun or part shade. And they also, um, even though woodland has very fertile soil, apparently the Clarkia can grow in um, very sandy soil in fact. They won't really like being waterlogged in clay soil and I do have clay soil but I have managed to grow Clarkia for years. The Clarkia elegans I'm growing today, all of them are going to grow to about 50 centimetres tall. My packet says 50 centimetres wide but I've never found that. More like 30 or 40 centimetres wide. So centimetres, so that's almost two foot tall and um, and they come in various different shades ranging from white through pink to salmony, um, some of them are in fact more lavendery and mauve. So those are the sort of shades that you can get. So these are all hardy annuals. They can be sown in September, um, but I'm sowing them in March. They can be sown between sort of March and June, and then they'll flower from June through to September. And I do find that they're quite long lasting. The pollinators love them. They're really good for cut flowers. I think that they work really well in borders and in cut flower arrangements, and they last quite a long time in a cut flower arrangement too. I don't necessarily space my Clarkia out in the borders as much 
as the packets suggest. Apparently, if we plant them closer together, then we'll get more flowers. And I do tend to find that I have lots of nice flowers. Um, they don't like hot, humid environments. So if you are growing in a, or living in a hot, humid environment, then they're not going to flower particularly well for you there. So the Clarkia that I'm sowing this year, um, I'm, I've got two that are new to me. The first one is Clarkia Apple Blossom, which is the gorgeous, palest, pinky, peachy colour, just exactly what you'd expect from Apple Blossom. I'm also sowing Clarkia Enchantress, which is a lovely apricot colour with red stamens. I think it's going to be amazing. I am sowing the white, which I've sown before, which is a lovely, brilliant, snowy white. I'm also sowing May Blossom, which I sowed last year, and this is a lovely pale pink, double or semi-double flower with lovely red stems. So then I'm going to move on to the ones that I'm calling Gadisha, which are Clarkia Amoena. And I'm only calling them Gadisha to differentiate them because the flowers on these are very different. They are much more upward facing and they're kind of cup shaped. They still have four petals. Um, and they seem to sit on the end of the stems. Now, last year when I grew these, even though they were in full sun, they were really short. They didn't grow to the 50 or 60 centimeters that they're supposed to, and I'm not sure why. So I'm going to try them again. If I don't manage to get long stems on them again, I think I may just give up. And no, these aren't dwarf varieties that I'm sowing. Just for some reason, I just had really short stems. Um, so the Amoena varieties, um, come in a range of pinky whitey colours through to some corally um, mauve colours and all of the petals have sort of a darker dot towards the centre of the flower and they are super pretty and because they open up more than the elegans varieties um, and they're kind of upward facing they look like bigger flowers. I think another way to describe the Amoena varieties are that they're sometimes called azalea flowered or satin flowers and that kind of describes the look of the flowers quite well I think. Um, they need exactly the same growing conditions as the elegans varieties that I described earlier so there is actually no difference in that at all. Um, I think if you manage to get your um, Clarkia amoena to grow tall, then you possibly will need to stake them if you want the very straight stems for cut flowers and things like that. Um, otherwise, I think they'll probably cope absolutely fine in a border. These can be grown in pots too. And even though I'm sowing mine into cell trays today, they can be sown direct outside. In fact, some of my seed packets say to sow them direct outside. Um, I've always started mine in cell trays. I just find it a lot easier for me. Although thinking about it, I may try and sow some directly in the grass border. I think that a few of them will look really good there. And also I think they'll like similar conditions to the grasses. The first amarina I'm sowing today is called Memoria. My seeds are quite old. I did grow this last year, it didn't grow very tall. I'm not sure why, um, but it's called Memoria and it's got these floaty white flowers with like a blush pinky center to them. The next one is called Grace Shell Pink and this is a whitey shell pink colour. It's gorgeous. The last one I'm saying today is a break from the tradition of all the paler ones that I've just gone through. This one is called Grace Salmon and it's this bright sparkling salmony colour that gives like a real tropical vibe. So I'm just going to get on with sowing my seeds. I use ordinary multi-purpose peat-free compost but by all means use seed compost if that's what you prefer and I'm going to sow onto the surface of the compost uh, some of the seed packets say to cover with um, an eighth, a sixteenth of an inch of soil. I mean, I, I don't know how we'd measure that. So just a light, very light sprinkling of soil. Other seed packets of mine say to sow them six millimeters deep if you're sowing them outside. So what I do though, is I just sprinkle them onto the surface of the compost and then I cover with a layer of vermiculite. And I like to use vermiculite because the vermiculite um, prevents the algae growth or it helps to prevent the algae growth, but it also keeps the seeds touching the moist compost, which is really important if you want your seeds to germinate.
I've done that, I'm going to bottom water them. And what that means is I'll put them in a tray of water and let the soil compost itself soak up the water from that tray. And that way I ensure that all the compost is equally moist. And I can tell when the compost is completely moist because the vermiculite changes from a pale color to a darker color. And then I know that the moisture has reached the surface. At that point in time, I take them out of the tray and drain them and then take them through to my seed starting room. From memory, these are not difficult to germinate. They're going to take sort of 10 to 14 days to germinate and they like 15 to 20 degrees. So I will put mine on a heat mat and I will cover them with a dome afterwards. And as soon as they've germinated, I'll take them off the heat mat and I will take the dome lid off. The reason I use a dome lid is to keep that moisture in again. It really does help seeds to germinate. So most of the Clarkia are going to go from germination to maturity, in other words, to flower, um, when we'll be able to pick them or enjoy them in our gardens in between 75 and 90 days. So now at the beginning of March is a really good time to sow those if we want blooms in three months time. If you want bushier plants, um, definitely pinch your Clarkia. Um, I only pinch mine once and I pinch them when they've got at least three sets of leaves and then I'll take the tips out and that will encourage them to branch. Um, but it is also important to remember to deadhead the Clarkia if you want your blooms to continue. If you don't have a seed starting room or a greenhouse um, or anything like that, or even a heat mat, it is possible to just germinate these indoors. Um, if you put them in a warmish room near a bright light, um, like a big window, then they should be fine. Obviously, once they've germinated, do remember to turn the trays 180 degrees every few days so that your seedlings don't start leaning towards the light. Um, it is very beneficial though to have um, bright overhead light. So if you've got a cold greenhouse or a zippy greenhouse, then that's really useful to grow in your seedlings so that they don't get really leggy. Well, that's about it for today. I really hope you found this video interesting and useful, and it's given you some tips about how to grow your Clarkia, Gadesha, Farewell to Spring, whatever you'd like to call it. And I hope that it's helped um, uh, mitigate some of the confusion um, because I, I certainly as a beginner um, got really confused by the different shape of the flowers um, when they had exactly the same name but I think I've nailed it down now anyway and I hope I've explained it sufficiently well. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and if you have do give it a like because it really does help me and if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to see how these plants do and you want to have more videos like this then hit the subscribe button because I would love to have you along for my journey. Anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.